I'm Sean Bose, concert visual designer in Los Angeles, California, and this is my Resolume Quick Start tutorial. At the end of this tutorial, you'll have a basic understanding of all the parts of Resolume and how to use the basic functions enough so that you can start playing around. Some prerequisites for this tutorial. First, obviously, you'll need to download and install Resolume if you haven't done that already. I will be using the latest version at the time of this recording, that is version 7.8, and just downloading it right off their website, just like you might be. If you have an existing version, this tutorial should work. We're just going over the basics, so there's no real version-specific stuff here quite yet. You will also need some content. I'm going to try to do as much of this with uh, the content that actually comes with Resolume as I can so that you have everything. If I use anything else, I'm going to package that up and there will be a little Dropbox link down below. You do not need a MIDI controller for this lesson. For future lessons that are more about MIDI mapping, you'll need one for that, but not yet. All right, so I'm going to quit talking and we're going to jump in. Like I said, if you do not have Resolume, head over to Resolume.com, go to their download page, and hit download. And that will download the latest version of Resolume. All right, so you're going to download and install that. And once that's all set, you can open it up and get started. When you first open up Resolume, you're going to see that watermark pop up. That watermark is active in the demo version of the software so that you can't go out and use it on shows and things like that. If you did purchase it, if you go to Arena Preferences and just go down to Registration and paste in your code, you can register it and that will make that go away. First, let's take a look at the interface and define a couple of terms that are going to come up over and over again in this tutorial. So when you open it up, this is the interface that you're going to see, and there are a few main parts of the interface. The top section here is where all of your content is going to live. These panels on the left side here are your monitors where you can see what your visuals look like. These center panels are your uh, property panels. This is where you can control all the different properties of the composition, layer, clips, and all the things that you're using. And these panels on the right here are all of your sources. So you have a file browser, uh, you can take a look at compositions that you've made in the past, you have all your effects in here, and you have other types of sources as well, like generative, objects and cameras and capture devices, things like that. So let's define a couple of terms. First one you're going to need to know is composition. The composition is the term for your entire project file, which you can think of as your entire performance. This is going to contain all of the content and all the different sections of your performance. The composition is your whole project file. And in the composition menu, you can see that it's kind of like the file menu in, in, in another program and you have your overall project settings where you can set your master resolution and frame rate and give this a name. The next term we should learn is deck. A deck is a collection of content that can be switched between using uh, these tabs here. We'll go into that a little bit later it'll be easier to see when there's some content in there uh, but it's basically a collection of clips that is viewed uh, in this grid up here and you can have a few of them and switch between them during a performance say if you were doing multiple artists or uh, different phases of the show or you know there's a two different sets or something you can organize them into decks if you want Speaking of this grid, the next word we're going to learn is clip. Each one of these squares represents a clip. And you can place a piece of content in there, whether that's a video or an image or even a piece of audio, and uh, place it 
into one of these clip slots where you can store it and play it back. Clips are organized into this grid, which is made up of layers, which are the horizontal rows, and columns, which are the vertical columns. And we'll talk a little bit about their functionality as we go along. Layers on a basic level are what allow you to mix multiple pieces of content together. So you can play a clip in layer one and play a clip in layer two and mix them together using the faders. Kind of like how a DJ uses their different turntables to uh, mix two different tracks together. The next level of organization that you can have is a group. We don't have any groups active here, but you can group two or more layers together and then that'll allow you to make changes or add effects to just those groups together uh, while, include, while excluding uh, some other groups. And you can do that by right clicking and making a new group and dragging whatever layers you want into it. And now these two are in a group. I'm gonna undo that, control Z, so we're back to where we started. All right, now let's go into a little bit more detail about some of these different panels and what we can do with them. Okay, so let's take a look at the file browser. This is where you're going to find your content. It's basically like an explorer window or a finder on a Mac. It's just a file browser docked inside of the interface here. So you can see that we are currently in C program files Resolume Arena and there's a bunch of folders. If we open up the media folder, uh, Resolume actually gave us some free content. So that's cool. It's got all these weird names. We don't know what it looks like. If we want a preview of some of this content, we can click this button over here at the top corner of the file browser and that will show previews. Now we have some little thumbnails uh, that kind of show us a little bit more about what the what this footage is and it brings up some details about resolution, frame rate, uh, whether it has alpha or not, stuff like that. If we want to get this into our composition all we have to do is click, drag, and drop it into one of these clip slots. And you can see that now that we dropped it in and it's selected, the clip parameters populated over here. We can see all the different parameters of this footage, like scale and width and height. Uh, but that's all boring shit. We want to play this. so. To play it, you just click on it, right on the thumbnail, and it plays it. And you can kind of see that there's a bunch of space around the edges, and that's because our footage is 1280 by 720, uh, but our composition is 1920 by 1080. So if we want to scale this up so that it fits the whole screen, we can do that. We can do that a few ways. We can either type in the width and the height, cool, or we could scale it up. Or if we don't want to do that, we can right click it on the, uh, the title bar there and go to resize and just choose fill. And that just makes sure that it scales up and fills the whole frame. That's cool, but we want to add a lot of content. Maybe we want to add all of this. We can do that. Click one, scroll down, hold shift, select a bunch of these. And if you drag that in, it'll populate left to right across the whole layer. And if we want to make sure that all of this is sized properly, we can click all of the title bars right click resize fill and now all of our content is the right size I'm just gonna undo that and show you that another way you can populate this if you want to fill up all the slots is that you can select multiple drag them drag them onto a column and when you do this it'll actually populate all of them 
up through the next column, up through the next column, and so on until you've uh, run out of clips. So like we said, we could click on the thumbnail of a clip and it'll start playing. And you can see it in the composition monitor. This monitor shows what is going to the output. But what if we want to see what a clip looks like without sending it to our stage? Well, you can uh, click on another clip just on the title bar, and that will send it to the preview monitor. So this clip of the tank is playing, but this clip of our jumping dudes is, uh, we're just previewing that, checking that out. This is kind of like cueing a track uh, as a DJ. We're, they're listening in the headphones, but it's not blasting out the speakers quite yet until they hit play. Now it's going to the output. You'll notice when I click uh, clips in the same layer, it switches what clip is playing. And that's kind of how layers work, right? You can, you can send your clip to the layer and one clip at a time is playing in this layer one. If we want to mix some clips, cause we're friggin' VJs, dude, uh, we can select a clip in layer one, and then we can start playing a clip in layer two. Hell yeah. Now we have two clips playing at the same time. And you can mix them together using uh, this V slider, which is uh, our video opacity slider. Another way that you can play clips is with these column buttons. And a column button allows you to trigger all of the clips in a column simultaneously. Bam! Now all three of these clips started playing right when I clicked column one. Boom! Column two. Pretty neat. So we're playing these uh, clips, but I don't know. I kind of think this looks whack, right? Because this clip is really more of a background. Uh, this clip would probably go over that, and then maybe this would be on top of that. So how do I like switch these around? Well, there's a couple ways we can do that. We can click and drag a clip on top of another clip, and they'll switch places. So we can do that and kind of get to where we want to go. You can also do that from the file browser. Add these jumping dudes in place of here. You can drag them in and replace that clip. And if you want a clip to stop, there's a couple ways to do that. You can click an empty clip that stops our fire. Uh, or you can click this little X next to the layer and that will stop that layer. So you can do similar types of things with uh, other types of content as well. Like let's say in our sources, we have all these generators and we can bring in maybe like a, a line preset, 45 degree pan. Let's bring that in instead of the fire. Oh yeah. Check it out, dude. And you can see that the clip parameters changed because now we're talking about these lines and you can go in and change some of these. Hmm, yeah, make them thinner. Maybe uh, maybe this should be red. Maybe we want them uh, straight up or horizontal. A lot of different options. And something you can do with these parameters, there's all kinds of different options for them. Like you can add uh, an envelope and put it on timeline mode. And now the, uh, the rotation angle is animating uh, from zero to 360 along this curve. Whoa, pretty crazy. If you want to get rid of any of that, click it again, undo it. Cool, but that's what's going on here. See, to animate the position, it's just on timeline mode. So as time goes on, 
it moves further down this line uh, and it's going from 0 to 1 which is across the whole way similar functionality when it comes to adding effects right you go to effects you got all these effects that you can add like uh, our good friend mirror drag that on the lines you just drop it on the clip that you want to affect and now our lines are mirrored and we get these cool like triangles we can go in adjust our parameters maybe we don't want it along x maybe we want it along vertically it's kind of cool maybe we want to flip it around all kinds of different options to play around with now effects are cool because they can actually be added to any level of the of the hierarchy so you can add it specifically to a clip if you want uh, you can also add it to a specific layer so let's say all right cool we mirrored that but we want to glitch out let's just search we got this nice search bar look for a glitch shift glitch let's toss a kaput shout out to drew best throw kaput on layer two and we can drag it onto the layer or we can drag it onto the layers uh, property panel and that'll drop in there and because we selected uh, layer two you can see that we can see a preview of what's happening in the layer two and layer two is getting all fucked up and glitchy uh, but layer three is chilling no glitch layer one no glitch just layer two it's glitching the fuck out and we can uh, turn off the effect either with the opacity slider nice and smooth or we have these uh, the bypass button which is the B right here you can toggle it on and off and the X button deletes it another place that you can add effects is to a group which will affect all that are in the group we don't have a group right now uh, but I'll show you that in a moment uh, and why you might want to use that or you can add it to the whole composition good one to add to the composition is maybe invert you can add a uh, invert RGB and now you have kind of a invert strobe effect you could see how you know you could add that to a button and hit the strobe and that's kind of cool and you'd want that maybe to affect everything in your composition uh, rather than just the one layer now let's take a look at why you might want to make a group and then we'll talk about how to send this to an output cool so this is pretty neat we have some content you can see how uh, things kind of stack up on top of each other as far as the layers go uh, how you can uh, add effects to different layers or to the whole composition which affects every layer that's visible at the moment or you can add effects just to a clip so that you can kind of dial in the look of a specific clip but let's talk about groups and why you might want to use them one of the main use cases I have for groups is I like to group up all of the content and then leave things like logos or uh, like if there's a frame element on the stage leave those on the outside so that I can affect all my content and my VJ content but leave like logos and things like that that need to be nice and clean leave those untouched let's make a group let's toss all of our content in there and let's make a 
let's make a new layer. It's layer, new layer, and maybe this layer uh, is where we're going to put our logos. Go for a uh, a text generator. Pop that in. And dope logo, dude. So now we got our logo. Uh, and what we could do is throw a friggin' sweet distortion effect on the group. Bah, 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 bah. But we're not affecting uh, the content underneath. This becomes a real issue with like, let's say we are using a mirror and we put it on our composition. Like, dog, my logo is all backwards. Now I look like c -Wob. Like, come on, man. We don't want that. Fuck with me. I want the logo to stay in the middle and I want just the content to do all that weird shit. Awesome. That's what we're talking about. So that is a way uh, that allows you to kind of add an extra layer of control into your composition uh, by using groups and, uh, and strategically placing your effects. Finally, uh, the last sort of basic step that we need is to send this to an output because this is cool this is what we're seeing you know in our output composition output but it's not really going anywhere like where are we sending this to it's just to here you're gonna have the whole crowd fucking hover over your shoulder and just like look at your resolute window no unless you're me at a concert because that's what I'm doing uh, no what you're gonna go to output the output menu and you can choose a display I got a display hooked up uh, you want to make sure you scroll down to multiple displays by default it's on duplicate so it's uh, mirroring the exact same thing so you're gonna be sending your friggin resolume window to the stage you don't want that uh, extend the display now you got two separate displays so we're gonna send it to display two that's our stage out there output full screen to display two boom you can disable it if you accidentally do one of these moves and full screen Ah, your own screen over Resolume and now shit you don't have a mouse uh, you can hit escape but ah, fuck you click again and bah, what is happening you're stuck just hit control shift D boom that disables the output alright so that is my Resolume quick start tutorial at this point you should be at a place where you can start dragging clips around adding effects messing around and seeing what you can discover that's a really important phase of this process is really to just play around see what happens break it a little bit uh, and then you can go watch my next videos in this series that will teach you a few more tips tricks and tools you can use inside Resolute to build a great show we're going to talk about MIDI mapping show design all kinds of shit thanks for watching if you like this video, please like, subscribe, come back later for more videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.